Welcome into the Paul Farrington Show. A quick Wednesday video here for you guys as we prepare for the NFL divisional round of the playoffs. As you can see, I'm still in the shirt. It's the same recording. It's, it's coming out later on uh, than our full Tuesday episode. But I'm still in this freaking Jordan Love jersey, which, as as I said in the Tuesday show, took forever to find. It was miserable purchasing it. Uh, purchasing it. I, I put it on, looked in the mirror, almost threw up, hated myself for a little bit, and I'm still in this jersey. Um, never again. I can't make these bets with Packer fans because I should have known Vikings, Packers, like I'm, I'm bound to lose that bet. With that said, I will 100% be placing another bet with Packer fans that they'll lose to the 49ers. <laughs> Need to figure out what that punishment will be. Um, but Paul joined by Jack Weinberger, Robert Ziggy Ziegler, who's still back at the University of Virginia, and Zach Bloomquist, the best executive producer of the game. The point of this video is that Jordan Love has been on an absolute tear lately. And the national media is finally starting to recognize it. That was the one thing, the big takeaway we saw from this Cowboys game is that now people are talking about Jordan Love. And Packers Nation is probably saying, well, it's about damn time. Have you seen the past nine games here? Dude's 212 for 300 passing, 2,422 yards, 21 touchdowns, one interception. The Packers are 7-2 and two in those games. Um, I mean, listen, right now, he's the best quarterback left in the NFC. I know Jalen Hurts is there. I know Brock Purdy, who's been in the MVP consideration, is there. Uh, but no one is hotter. No one's playing better than Jordan Love. If you just watch the games, it, it's obvious. It sucks. <laughs> it sucks that he's like, you know, there's a level as a Vikings fan that I can tolerate where he's very good. You know, and it's, it's gone on all season where it's, okay, he stinks. This is awesome. Okay, maybe he's not that bad. And eh, he's about average. Okay, they, they have a guy who can be above average. And now it's like we're talking about a, arguably a top five quarterback in football the way he's looked lately. But what's been crazy about this season is that there was a stretch where Jordan Love was two and five. The Packers went two and five. He threw eight touchdowns and 10 interceptions. And then all of a sudden flipped it to those last nine games that I said. Uh, and we're kind of wondering, we're trying to sit back, sit back here and say, how did this happen? Because most people are saying you just flipped the switch. It's magical. But Ziggy, you did a little digging today. And what did yeah, you the, find? Because we, so there has to be an answer, right? They, like no one just goes from two and five to seven and two, f flipping the switch completely. So what, what do you find in your deep dive? The biggest change in Jordan Love's performance from the first half of the season to now is how he has handled pressure. Right through week nine, Jordan Love was arguably the worst quarterback in the entire NFL under pressure. 43% completion, three touchdowns, three interceptions. Not good. Since week nine, he's at 50% completion, nine touchdowns, one interception under pressure. And the Cowboys game showed that even better. Under pressure, five for seven, 152 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, average depth of target, almost 20 yards. Jordan Love has become excellent at navigating the pocket. And importantly, you can tell he has a lot more chemistry of his receivers because those throws under pressure are where you've got to be able to anticipate where your receiver is going, particularly on those middle of the field throws that he struggled with in games like the Falcons game early on. He's learned how to do that. He's vibing much better with his receivers. And when he's under pressure, he's consistently delivering the ball. He's under pressure just as much now as he was at the start of the season. The offensive line hasn't gotten much better. But his ability to perform while guys are in his face has been the huge driver of why he only had one PFF grade, a better than 70 through week nine, and seven since week nine. God, I love love. Paul, you're saying top five. This guy is the best quarterback in the National Football League right now. This man is the best quarterback left in the NFL play, uh, wait, in wait, the NFL can't, but he, let me ask you. Let me. Ask this you. man has one mistake it's, in the last nine weeks. It's a little, he is it's a, flat out awesome. I mean, I watched this last game against Dallas, and there came a point in the first quarter where this guy's dropping back, and you knew it was going to be caught by somebody running wide open. He played like Aaron freaking Rodgers on the road against one of the better defenses in football and lit them up in his first ever playoff start. Wait, wait, but let me ask you, you for be real here. You should be honored to have found a Jordan Love jersey. <laughs> no, I, it was hard. I mean, this it's guy is fantastic. Out. No, 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 but I, actually, for, for real here, like, I, if you think he's, he's playing... He's played the last nine games with no interceptions. No, no, but so you actually think he's playing, like, saying he is the best quarterback versus, right now he's the hottest in the league, Who would you, would you say? take right now in the playoffs over Jordan Love? I, I take Mahomes, I take Allen, I take Lamar. 
easily. All three. Of them. I don't know if I would in one game. I mean, I think most. I think I think you have to in this situation. I think Jordan Love has had a better season than Mahomes. Probably, but if you said to me, win one game, Jordan Love or Patrick Mahomes, I'm taking Patrick Mahomes, and you are too. Okay. Are you right? I mean, I don't know. I mean, no, I you do, but I think you don't have to worry about like is Jordan Love be- a better quarterback than Patrick Mahomes because that's not really the question. The question is, is he playing at a level that's good enough to elevate the Packers as far as they want to go? I think the answer to that over the second half of the season is clearly yes. No, and that's yeah, that's what's jo- scary about him right now. Josh Allen's been been a little shaky. Jalen Hurts has been shaky. So has Mahomes. Jordan Love, the last nine games, has not. Well, that that's what well that's what's terrifying about them. If you have to play him over the next couple of weeks, is that the the way Jordan Love has played, you're seeing the confidence and the talent blend together like we haven't before. You know, this was the dream that Packers fans had, and when he's playing like this, then yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying where he's on that level. He's playing on the like, level of Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. And the weapons there. Yes, right now I wouldn't take anybody over him playing the quarterback position left in the playoffs. And call me totally insane. You can call me insane. I, I think it is insane, yeah. but I I do understand where you, if you were coming from the point of the way the Packer offense is playing as a whole, that they're as dangerous a unit as anyone in the playoffs. Because I do think that that offense is is clicking, you know, as as well as anyone. It's super three dimensional. They got weapons on top of weapons. Four solid weapons for him to pick and choose from. The run game is great with Aaron Jones. Four straight games over 100 yards, really opening things up and taking a lot of pressure off of Jordan Love. Uh, yeah, it's just it's a wheel going around right now for Green Bay, and, and it's truly incredible to see. Ziggy, to kind of go back to what you were saying about Love performing under pressure, and, and, you know, I do think that there is a degree of him just, you know, becoming more accurate and the receivers playing better football. I think they're all growing as the season's gone on. It's not... Um, there is a degree of magic to it, like people are saying. Um, but the way he has, he's seeing the field now. The Cowboys were again torn apart every time they blitzed them. Like that, you know, that was obvious to anyone watching the game when they sent the house. I think they it was a cover zero on on the pass to Wicks over the middle of the field. Like he's just putting it on the money every single time, and that's why when you sit back and think about Green Bay, big picture here, the rest of this postseason. They could go into San Francisco and, and win games because if their quarterback's playing like the arguably, as you know, Jack would say, the best in the league right now, you don't care who, what defense you're facing. You can pick them apart. Um, those numbers under pressure were crazy. Jeez, five or seven. What do you say? 152 yards and two touchdowns? Yeah. I, I noticed that when Green Bay and, and Love was struggling early on in the year, Love tended to have super happy feet while facing any sort of the slightest pressure. And he would panic and, and just throw the ball but now he's he's standing in there he He took some shots yeah he looks comfortable confident he he makes the right read he's he's accurate he's just so much better it's like it's like two-face moving out of the pocket too he had a couple throws on the run where you know he he comfortably moving out (laughs) scanning the field and then putting it on the money and you're like that's that's like rogers top level one throw on the first drive it was it was a third down crowds getting loud in at&t stadium Jordan Love, I believe he was being blitzed and fires a seed over the middle to midfield to, I believe it was, it was, Hard, Dobbs, right? Hargrave. Well, maybe it was Dobbs, one I mean, of those Dobbs, guys. Yeah. And I'm like, this guy, this guy's transformation throughout this season has been otherworldly, like unimaginable what he's, what he's done. Oh no. I've talked about a couple with, with some people from work. I can't remember seeing somebody turn it on the way he has this year from where he was in October to now we're talking replacement like people were serious we we didn't put out many videos that were bashing the Packers despite them you know being two and five at one point but we definitely had I I looked today three videos where we questioned okay if if this continues you're gonna have to look to move off them next year you don't have a lot of guys that go from that conversation to now being you know an MVP candidate in the second half of the year it's I've never seen anything like it it would be as if Daniel Jones in the middle of the season suddenly started playing like one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Yeah, yeah that's like think think about that. For anyone listening right now, just think about Daniel Jones, who had a you know, people said he had a good year last year, not this past one, the year before. Imagine him having played <laughs> at an MVP level. And what the yeah. Giants team could like it's it's ridiculous when you think about it. We were saying, I remember we we released a video where Ziggy's like, bye bye, Jordan Love. And I agreed with him, and I believe you did too. Well, we were, I mean we said we said give him time. We said we kept saying the entire year, 
that the whole goal of this season was to get gain confidence in Jordan Love heading into 2024. And it just moved along from losing all that faith to, okay, we have a little bit of faith. All right, this guy's good. And now here we are in the divisional round saying that they have the quarterback advantage against Brock Purdy, who, you know, people said could be the MVP at many points. And to be totally honest with you, right at this very moment, we talk about the quarterback advantage in that game. I don't think it's particularly close. No, every every single person like, would take Jordan Love. I would in this take game. Jordan Love by a, a by a mile. Like what he's doing with these receivers that he has. I mean, you give Jordan Love Debo and Kittle and what and what uh Purdy has. I mean, are you kidding me? No, he's turned into everything like, the Packers fans wanted. You have, and more. you have all the physical tools and and when you're throwing the ball the way he is. So you think he's the, you think he's the best quarterback in the NFL right, right now? Right <laughs> now, I mean, we're talking we're talking up these Packers receivers, right? And for good reason. These these guys are solid, but they're young, and we wouldn't be they wouldn't be where they are without this elite level play from Jordan Love. No, I mean we saw many of not all of them, but many of these same receivers come out with Aaron Rodgers last year. It's not like Aaron Rodgers is a bad quarterback. It's not like he doesn't know how to throw the ball, and these guys weren't putting up similar results. No. And again, I, I do, like I said, I love the run game. I love Aaron Jones. I think if he continues to do what, what he does, it makes it a lot easier for Jordan Love and the, the pass game as a whole. Yeah, I think it's a wheel going around. So there you have it. I mean, we're, we're all in agreement here that this dude somehow is, and just thinking of like Lions fans, Pack, uh, Bears fans, us Vikings fans. You know, I'm watching this Cowboy game and I just looked over at my dad and I'm like, these guys just suck. Like, like I don't know how this happens all the time. They just, they just get, I get that there's an they're organization. I get that there's coaching. I get all of that. To go a weak quarterback, a weak quarterback to looks a weak quarterback. Well, I think I'm in denial. I, I actually, maybe I'm in bargaining right now because, I, yeah, I think I'm in the bargaining phase where I'm thinking to myself that this is a great stretch, an all-time stretch in the career of Jordan Love probably. But I'm thinking, all right, next year probably won't happen. He's just hot. And some, I'm, I was talking to uh, one of the producers I work with who is a big Packer fan. He said, dude, I think this is just the future well, for you. Well, I was tell, like, oh, my God. I'll tell you the players who stand out to me as not in the middle of the season, but having had similar moments where Jordan Love's improvement isn't like he's getting more yards after the catch. It's not like he's launching more bombs. It's improvement in his ability to navigate the pocket and throw accurately. The two players that have done that and maintained it for a stretch as long as this, say 10 games, Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. And neither of them have had huge regressions in their accuracy or ability to deliver the ball. So once you have a breakthrough like this, once you learn how to navigate a pocket, read defenses better. I mean, he's a completely different player than he was at Utah State. It tends to stick around. Let's, um, yeah, Let, let's, let's wrap up this little segment here with... I want to ask you, Jack, when you seriously sit back and look at the Packers and think about them as a Super Bowl threat, 10 being a big-time threat, one being this was a cute run. And I, we all know that's not the case anymore. How, Considering who they're going up against this weekend, how, how likely do you think it is that they advance to the Super Bowl right now? One to 10. I'm going to say between a 6 and a 7. That's uh, a pretty serious number. <laughs> yeah, because look, you have to beat San Francisco, which is, which is a tall ask. But then you have a team in Detroit. And like you're telling me Packers, Lions, NFC Championship, the Packers aren't going to win that game. Like if you get past San Francisco, you probably have the Lions, a team you mauled the crap out of once already in their home stadium. And then a Super Bowl. So I mean, I don't think I'd go anything less than a six. And it's only that low because you're playing San Francisco on the road. I don't think they win that game. But if they do, it goes up to like an eight for me. How about you, Ziggy? I think this is it. I'm going to have to do a little bit more research before a big preview show. Yeah. But it just, I'm getting a feeling that them facing the San Francisco team that the magic's going to run at. They've been very good, but the Cowboys had weaknesses that the Packers matched up really well against. It's just not the same against the 49ers. I've only got them at a three or a four. You're right that if they can somehow go on the road and be at least the second best team in football, they've got a pretty clear path from there. But there's a reason why last year it was the two one seeds that made the Super Bowl. It's because the 49ers are coming off rest. They're prepared. They've got an elite defense, the most productive offense in the NFL. And even though I think Jordan Love is very, very good, almost no one in the NFL has been able to beat him. I think it's going to be more of the same. 
He also, I mean, as, as I said uh, a little while back, too, I think this Packers run game has to be strong, and there's no better defense up front in that front seven than San Francisco. 49ers seem to have their number. Uh, wh- while the Cowboys yeah. are owned by the Packers, the 49ers have had Green Bay's number in the playoffs recently. But it would be They've a nice had revenge. Lafleur's number his whole career. Yeah, I, I have to put it with. I'm closer to Ziggy. Like I, I would actually, I, to hate. I hate to be in the middle and out of five, so I, I'll go down to like a four. I don't think they're beating San Francisco, but I, I do think that the, it'll be a good game. And if they do win, I think they go to the Super Bowl. Do we like, all oh, show up with our faces painted green and yellow if they beat San Francisco? I think we might have to. I don't know, maybe I think cheese we might have maybe to. I'm not painting my damn face, but maybe cheese said all right. Maybe cheese said. Look, I, we don't, I don't have know. to worry about that because we all know who's winning Joe Barry versus Christian McCaffrey. And Packers fans, you can say in the comments, you know who's winning Joe Barry versus Christian McCaffrey. That's, don't yeah, lie. But don't Jordan, lie. I think Joe I like I'm I'm serious. I think Joe Love's gonna keep him in it. I he's I mean he's, yeah. We'll uh, see. They, all these Packers fans will come in here and say they think they have a chance. One million percent. Oh, they should. They and should. They, yeah, and they should. They should. They one hundred percent have a chance. Uh, we're gonna have a lot more content coming out this week. Tomorrow we'll have the divisional round preview show, and then I believe we'll have three keys for a Packer win on Friday, and uh, we're gonna do a live stream again on Saturday at a one o'clock Eastern. We're gonna go live, and hopefully everyone joins. We'll have some fun like we did last Sunday. I mean, that was a great time. I had that might be the most fun I've ever had doing the show. Oh, live show, live stream. Um, so hop in. We'd love to to see in the chat, answer questions, laugh with you guys. Um, we'll talk about some more Wisconsin bars. <laughs> we'll see you soon.